we found out that Dave Grohl was going to be in the movie, Keanu and I kept going, Dave Grohl! Right? Like that. We were so excited. Hi there, and welcome to this panel uh, for Bill and Ted Face the Music, which is now available on Blu-ray and on digital. I am your host, Clark Collis, a senior writer at Entertainment Weekly magazine. It is my I always say it's a huge pleasure, and, I, and I'm usually kind of half fibbing, but this time it, it really is my huge pleasure to say that I have here both Bill and Ted. We've got Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves. How's it going, gentlemen? Hey, how's it going, Clark? Good to see you. And we also have another, uh, very pleased about this, another cast member of Bill and Ted Face the Music, playing really, I would have to say, the role he was born to play, Mr. Dave Grohl. How's it going, Dave? Going very well. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. So the film is coming out uh, on Blu-ray. A lot of people still won't have seen it. Alex, could you sort of like tee up the, the movie a little, little bit for us? Well, it's Bill and Ted uh, catching back up with us all these years later. And uh, we have not, uh, we have wonderful lives. We have wives and daughters and, and we love our lives. We have not succeeded in writing the song that would uh, save the world. And, and we are now in deep... Uh, doo doo uh, with the uh, the powers that be, and we were given very little time to actually write this song. Um, so I'm going to blame Ted. Ted has this great idea to steal the phone booth and uh, and go uh, find in what timeline we may have actually uh, written this thing. And uh, we collide with uh, with Mr. Grohl when uh, we are bamboozled into something that I don't want to give away, but. Uh, Needless to say, there he is. We've spent our whole life trying to unite the world. And I'm tired, dude. Ted, we have a destiny to fulfill. Whoa! Whoa! Oh. Greetings, my excellent friend. We have a problem. Step forward. A song created by Preston Logan. Performed tonight will save reality as we know it. Oh! oh. Dude, we better write that song now. Or why can't we just go to the future when we have written it? And take it from ourselves. Dave, how did you how did you get involved in, in the movie? Did you did you know these fine gentlemen beforehand? As I was on my way to the set that day, I mean I was there for like nine and a half minutes. I just it was you know it, it was they really were quality cool. minutes though. They so, were they were high quality minutes. One take, baby. One take. <laughs> so but I was, I was remembering uh, on the way to, to the set, I remembered the first time I met these guys. Now, the first time I met Alex was when Nirvana was in Los Angeles recording the record, Nevermind. And I, you, it was like in Venice Beach and there was like a party at some house. But My at the time, there was that television show that you were doing. Um, the Idiot Box. Not, Yes, and, and me and Kurt and Chris were obsessed with the show. We just thought it was the coolest thing. We really were. And so every day we'd go to the studio and every night we'd like come home and watch the show. And we just thought it was so cool because it was really, at that time, that was 1991, there was this really radical sort of youth culture that was coming out and it was making its way into radio and it's making its way into TV. And so we kind of felt connected to this thing like, oh, these people are just as messed up as we are <laughs> and they have a TV show, like it's amazing. And then I remember meeting uh, Keanu, I met you New Year's Day, 1992, because the Foo Fighters, or not Foo Fighters, Nirvana, had played with the Chili Peppers and Pearl Jam on New Year's Eve in San Francisco. And we all stayed at that Phoenix hotel and I remember like coming downstairs, I think it was the next day and you were getting on your motorcycle. I was like, that is a bad motorcycle, man. I'm like, wow, that's Keanu Reeves on this cool motorcycle. So I, we have kind of a weird sort of, I mean, we've been Collision. in each other's sort of it's stratosphere for a little while. Yeah. For that for night, it was very epic, Mr. Grohl. I have many stories just as cool as this. I'm just not going <laughs> to tell them right now. Let me let me tell you. Uh, and so, Dave, what what did you think when you were approached about uh, about um, about appearing in the film? Well, I mean, you know, one of the things about the Bill and Ted legacy is that it, it it's it's kind of more than just you know movies. You know, at the time. I think it represented something that was kind of a little bit more cultural, you know? So like coming from that same era and coming from that same place, like, you know, it was a big part of popular culture back then. 
And so to see it return was like, oh my God, you know, it's, it, 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 was a, it was a big deal. And so, you know, I've got kids, I have a 14 year old, 11 year old and six year old, you know, they don't look at it the way I would look at it from its history over the last three decades or whatever, but I knew that they would enjoy it too, you know? So, so to be asked to be a part of something that was, that I felt connected to generationally, and then also to do it because I knew that my kids would be into it. Um, it was kind of, you know, it was, it, it was both sides of the coin, man. It was really great. So this is a, just a question for Keanu and Alex. You can put your earmuffs on, Dave. W was he any good? Like, did, did, was there, did you have to sort of, like, was a lot of stuff you had to fix in post with Dave's performance? What, you know, what, what happened? Well, it was, for me, it was, uh, you know, in this moment, you know, we opened a door and it's, Dave Grohl! <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, um... You know, unfortunately, I didn't have the chance to to work with you, Dave, because I was I was uh, not in town. I was in Berlin at the time, so I really I got to act and kind of show my love and enthusiasm and appreciation for you know Dave and his artistry. You know that has been such a part of my life and uh, moved me, and you know moved me in the best of times and in the worst of times. So in that moment when I got to play Ted with Alex, you know, even though the person wasn't there, in a weird way, the, you know, Ted, you know, in the film, I'm kind of like, Dave Grohl! You know, it's, it's so cool to, I felt like I was kind of meeting or projecting onto this, you know, idea, energy of the artist. And it felt really cool to be able just to even do that. You know, the movies are uh, rooted in in rock and roll music, and and the characters' love for rock and roll, and we that's really fun to play. And actors always want to be rock. There isn't an actor who doesn't really want to be a rock star, right? So, in Bill and Ted, we get to do air guitar and jump around, and we get to sort of live the the sort of real fantasy of like how much people want to be in that world. So it was really important to us in, the mo in this movie to have uh, the presence of an artist that really embodied rock right now. Um, and so we were really, really jazzed that that, that was Dave because Foo Fighters, I would, I would argue, is, is one of the, if not the preeminent rock band that, that represents that kind of rock and like it's in that pure form that hasn't got watered down or over popified or whatever. But what Keanu was just saying was, you know, there's a lot of difference between me and Keanu and the characters of Bill and Ted, and then there what? isn't. There, I know. Well, there there actually isn't too. There largely is, and then there isn't. And when we when we found out that Dave Grohl was going to be in the movie, Keanu and I kept going, Dave Grohl, right, like that. We were so excited, right? And then we were like, oh shit, that's totally what we got to do on screen, right? Because it's the same thing. And we spent all day, like the whole. Just Dave wasn't there. We shot that scene later. Mm. But you would have laughed your butt off because literally all day. The whole crew was walking around going, Dave Grohl! <laughs> this is getting really awkward, you guys. It would have it would have actually been really, really uncomfortable, I have to say. The film came out, I mean, as with so many films this year, the idea was that it would have a big cinema release. And obviously that's not what happened. But um, unlike so many films, uh, you know, it, it did come out earlier this year. And on my social feed, anyway, I've never seen such a sort of, outpouring of happiness it really did seem like something people were just like it's great that it's here anyway and and on top of that we love it and on top of that thank heavens there's something that can you know uh, i could watch these two idiots for for an hour and 45 minutes and it'll take my uh you know it'll take my mind off what's going on is that i mean is that i mean did you sort of did, did you feel that too I mean, we hoped, uh, look, we didn't, you know, it was a horrible thing to, to have this pandemic erupt. And, and we spent several months just like every other human being on the planet trying to make sure we were okay and figure out our lives. Um, but once that dust settled a little bit, we, we really felt like the, we wanted to get this movie out to the fans. We didn't want to wait another two years. And we also did genuinely believe that it would be, a sweet movie to watch at home. I mean, we, we love the movie going experience. We're in the movies, you know, and that's really important. And 
And it's important that we support exhibitors and that we don't let theaters die during this time because we're all gonna go rushing back to the movie theater. So um, it wasn't the optimal way to release the movie, but we did think it would be something that people would enjoy at home. We write these songs so that we can bring people joy or happiness or escape or something just to sort of, you know, soothe their soul. And whether you're bouncing around in a stadium or a movie theater, or you're bouncing around in your kitchen with a bottle of wine or a movie, I think that it's important that at this time, people need that joy and happiness and they need, they need some escape or they need some, some relief, you know? Do you think this is the last time you gentlemen will play Bill and Ted on the, in a movie? Or should we see you in, in 20 years time? You know, it's, uh, you, 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 yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I love the role. I love working with Alex and, and, you know, I can't, I don't want to say no, because I thought that 20 some odd years ago. <laughs> even 10 years ago, even five years ago. <laughs> so I won't say, but, uh, you know, if people would spend some time with us and enjoy it, then that would be really awesome. It could be down to Dave Grohl to take over the franchise and, and move it on to. to hey, to look! If if we do another one, we got to get we've got to get Dave actually on set for a meteor uh, uh, participation. That's all. <laughs> I'll tell you what; it's the last time I'm ever playing Dave Grohl. How about that? Dave Grohl! <laughs> Dave Grohl! Oh! Okay. Well, on that note, this has been. Uh, uh, I hopefully, I mean, no. Not down to me, but a hugely entertaining uh, panel for Bill and Ted Face the Music, which is now available to buy on a Blu-ray and digital. Folks, this has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, direct from my mother's living room. Thank you so much. Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter. And thanks for Dave Grohl! <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> See you, fellas. Take care. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Clark. Bye. Thanks, folks. Really appreciate it. Bye, Clark. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye.